Hi guys, it's Unders. Today we are looking at the iRig Mic Studio from IK Multimedia. It is a condenser-based capsule microphone and if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, pop a like on the video. There's also a link to this bad boy down in the description. Let's dig into it. Today we are out of the little studio space. We're gonna have a look at something a little bit different. So I thought one of the first things we could look at is the mic that I use for these sort of, sort of uh, podcasts. It's the iMic by IK Multimedia. Instead of me always looking at software and inside logic, I've decided to break out a little bit. We're going to look at the magical world of hardware, but still on the budget studio thing and how that you can use that to increase what you're doing with your own productions. I use this mic for my music a lot. If you ever listen to some of my tracks, there are loads and loads of Foley recordings, especially the most recent one's going to be Tones. In there, there is puddle splashes, uh, rain, train station sound, all recorded using this little guy. And it, it's just a really little bit of versatile kit that you can really expand in what you're doing. It's obviously USB powered, so it doesn't require its own preamp. Its own preamp is built into this, which is also how it's able to be bus powered from an iPhone or another device like, like so, which allows you to obviously use it for relatively long periods. If you've got something like the iPhone Plus, um, your battery life on that is awesome. So you can just keep running this and do very long recordings. Obviously, if you're capturing footage as well, you can do both together and this replaces the audio from mic from the phone once it's plugged in. We can see the wonderful box here. It comes with a couple of bits that are really great to know about it. So firstly, it's a USB mic. Now, it comes with a normal USB cable and a micro USB which plugs in the bottom here. By the way, all the audio you can hear in this is just coming from this mic now as we're recording it. So hopefully it's gonna sound spot on even though I've set it up a bit of a demo purpose. Now when you plug it into a Mac or PC it automatically detects the drivers, it detects the mic and shows up as another extension. So if I plug it into Logic I can record it straight onto an input if that's how I choose to use it. Um, obviously when I'm recording for you guys I tend to do that uh, via the capture software I'm using and then we just do everything through that. It also comes with um, another micro USB connection and a lightning connection so you can hook it directly up into your iPhone and that is how I do all the Foley recordings. It's how we're hooked up right now so this is video and audio coming from this mic you're hearing it connected via a lightning connector. This allows you to then take the mic out and get all kinds of Foley recordings in other areas. Um, it comes with a little carry case as well which is great you can just pop that in a bag and then take it away with you. Just pop the cable out, plug it in, capture what you're doing. What I'll do in this video, I've just done like some little bits just in the kitchen, just capturing some sounds that you can just capture, just tapping spoons on my cup of tea here, um, clicking the kettle. As well as I've done some recordings of some rain at the garden behind me, I've got some nice bird recordings and things like that, just so you guys can get an idea of it. Also a nice little trick, because it's a mono mic, if you record a really long period of audio, hopefully you're picking up that plane nicely too, if you record a nice long piece of audio like I have in the garden, you can then split the two, uh, pan it left and right, and you get a nice stereo depth that way which is a good way of making use of a nice larger cardioid style microphone, which gets a really good response out of it, and making use of uh, getting a nice stereo field and good in-depth recordings. So versatility wise, it's really great. I use it in the studio for these podcasts. I use it for like bits of vocal work, recording bits of instrumentation, Foley work because I can travel around with it. The little stand it comes with is also in it which is perfect for exactly what we're doing right now. 
You can just uh, click this down and hold it and just get close to up to your source, which is how I've done some of the puddle and river recordings. You guys that follow me on Facebook, you might have heard the um, cracking ice over the winter. Done on the same mic, sounded awesome. So like ease of use. Something that's really nice about it is setting the levels for it uh, for a microphone can be a pain in the backside. I'm sure you guys have had that at some point and gain staging and things like that. This has just a really simple system of a blue light, a green light, orange light, red light. Blue light is idle, green is perfect recording, orange is getting near your threshold, red is clipping. Um, you can then set the gain on the front based on your audio source and I'll pop a little video of that in just with how that adjusts and you can work it out. And lastly, it allows you to plug into the back here a set of headphones so you can monitor directly what's coming into the mic. Um, obviously you could do that through the iPhone, it depends what works for you. But if you're just setting it up to record, you can monitor, even just use some ear pods really quickly, make sure you're getting what you want and it sounds right. Just pop them out and then just let the recording happen. Um, it's perfect little mobile versatile mic. Uh, it's a just a great bit of kit all around to be honest. I just thought it might be something you guys would look into a little bit more rather than just going plug in sample libraries. So some things that I will say about it, the adjustment on the front can be a little bit sensitive and you will have to play around to get it about right. And what would be nice is if the dial had sort of uh, some, some feedback or some some sort of detail on the knob so it's easy to grasp and twist. It's not particularly difficult, but it would just be nice if that could be changed. If it was either soft, so to the touch, you were able to move it directly, or if it was ridged to some respect, so it would almost stick to your thumb, allow a bit of movement that way. And let's just see how sensitive we can go. We're just gonna try and capture the ticking from my watch. So it's just a really great way to capture your own sounds, own sample libraries and make your tracks more unique to what they already are. Um, I mean, that's, that's it really. It is a nice little mic. We're going to have some little edited bits of footage in, hopefully, which uh, summarise what we've got. It also comes with a couple of apps. So there are some applications that allow you to record audio in slightly better quality. You have to pay an extra... Uh, fee depending on which platform you're on for the 16-bit um, 44.1 kilohertz files what you can just do which is what I've done for a lot of the Foley recordings is just use the voice capture app uh, voice memos app that's on iPhone only lets you export an mp3 which is at 320 but unless you're purely playing that singular record now if it's doing what I'm doing, where you're putting it in music, no one's really gonna know. It does exactly what you need for it. And you're probably gonna affect it and play around with the sound anyway. Yes, it would be better to have the WAV. Um, I just don't bother. Also, it takes up a lot of storage on a phone and I can't afford to be spending massive amounts on 128 gig phones right now. Another feature that's really nice that comes with this, you get access to the IK Multimedia mic library as part of the custom shop. So if you are recording your voice, like I am, or another source that you would wish to have a certain mic sound on, you can use this mic as your default to say record voice, uh, acoustic guitar, something like that. And you can then adjust this plugin to give a particular mic sound. So if you wanted like a vintage tube mic, there's a couple of options in there. I think what I will do is, do, 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 yeah, I will record you some brass just play back through my own speaker system and then we'll have a look at the mic plugin as well that comes as part of this because it's a nice little uh, feature for you to be adding more breadth to your sounds and things that you've recorded yourselves okay guys so as promised we're just inside logic and we're going to have a look at the mic room plugin that you can use that comes with your uh, studio purchase if you decide to get it you also are able to get a like a app version of this you can do the recordings and change the mic sound when you're recording directly onto your iphone or ipod or whatever now what's important here in the plugin we have on the left side our original source mic now obviously at the moment you can see i've got the irig uh, studio selected 
this doesn't necessarily apply to much what we're doing now, but if you were recording specifically from that mic, this would then understand the profile and noise that associated with that mic and then can then adjust it to what you've got on the right hand side. Now what I'm doing is just running some um, brass instruments from Complete. I've just made a loop here in a little track I've been working on and we're just going to hear what, what it can do. But that is normally how you would work it. Now you can apply it to other mic sources as well. So if you have a, a look here, there's a whole host of different mics. Um, you know, most of you are probably going to have a 57 and things like that that you can record with at some point as most people's first mic. There's a whole bunch in here that you can uh, mess around with. For the purpose of this though, we are just going to be sticking with the studio mic and then we can just flick through some of the targets and how you can adjust the proximity and harmonics. So turn everything off, just have a quick listen to the brass. And on. Cool. So let's push it up so it's just a bit louder to hear, it's a bit low there. Now you can adjust the proximity, which is how close the microphone sounds. And that's a really cool effect when you've recorded a vocal to adjust how close or far it feels from the mic. And then you can get harmonics. And that's quite nice there with that going into that condenser. And then you've got the ability to just flick through these different microphones and just have a, a listen to the different sounds you can get out. That 414 there, my absolute favourite mic for recording this sort of thing. And it does a really nice thing to the sound as well if you listen. See, that gives a really nice uh, effect to the sound and all it's really doing is adjusting the profile to what it thinks was recorded versus what this C414 should sound like and this gives you uh, a new a new scope when using sound libraries so obviously this is a brass library that everyone has however if I go through this little process it sounds a little bit different to that default brass library someone will hear it and it's not the exact same sound like by default you add in your own bit of character to it and I mean there's a plugin that comes free with a mic I didn't even really know about it when I got it it's great for that and that's just what I've been using this tool for if it's something you want to look at further just comment in the video and we can go through it in a full-on video so guys I hope this review has been helpful for you if you have liked it please pop a like on it if you have watch my videos before but not subscribe to the channel yet please subscribe to the channel and if there's something you want to see on this channel let me know in the comments below guys i shall see you next time